Okay, are you ready? <laughs> so, welcome everybody. Thank you very much for coming here. For joining the uh, opening of uh, event series. Events is called uh, Legal Tech Meetups. So we will have uh, uh, those meetups uh, every fifth week on Tuesday uh, from or less six till nine. Uh, if you, of course, uh, we will try to play uh, democracy here, and if you don't like the time, so we can revote uh, the time and to change, but uh, the idea is to have uh, the evenings, uh, our meetings. And, of course, I want to thank you very much uh, for Nicholas Ramirez uh, University, which made uh, such uh, event uh, possible. Uh, very big thanks to Nicholas Ramirez Law School, and there you can see the dean of the law school of Nicholas Ramirez University. Also, MRU Lab, which uh, hosts us. And of course, all of you who came the speakers, thank you so much for supporting our event uh, and uh, for everybody, uh, from professor who came from uh, Vilnius University uh, Mathematics and Informatics uh, Department, from Vilnius Gediminas Technical University and all others who came here. So I'm very proud that you came here and I'm um, totally happy. So for me it's a fest now. <laughs> so the idea is that um, everybody, because now uh, you can see that the hashtag uh, is zero. So it means zero in mathematics means nothing. So legal tech meetups still haven't started. So the first will be after one month. So you all can decide the topic uh, in which we could, would like to discuss and uh, I will do the best to find uh, speakers. And if you want to present by yourself, of course, you are very, very welcome. If we have too much topics, so we can vote. We have alternatives, so very democratic. <laughs> so I hope, I, I don't want like to show the only topics which I like, so this is community uh, event, let's say. So you are building it. So you are part of that. Uh, so event organizer is, uh, in May, Nicholas Ramirez University, especially uh, dean of uh, law school, has established a legal tech center, and I represent uh, that center. So please, Follow us on social media. Uh, we will post uh, frequently uh, on Facebook, on Instagram. You will find some photos. By the way, uh, some privacy issues. So there is computer which uh, broadcasts to YouTube. So if you don't want to be on YouTube, <laughs> don't go in this area. Uh, if you would like not to be uh, photographed, uh, shoot it on camera, and post it to Instagram, so, I don't know, we can maybe agree, maybe you can sit uh, on that corner, okay, and everybody else would be used for uh, promotion of other legal tech uh, meetups, is it okay for you? All right. 
Uh, what else? Uh, also, I would like to invite you on 28th, uh, it will be European Research uh, Night. So we will have a practical event on uh, chatbots. Uh, so we will organize hackathon. And at the moment, we are in a negotiation on uh, price uh, funds. So if you will follow us on Facebook, you will get all the information. But you are really very, very welcome to come to join this event and to practice by yourself how to create a chatbot without coding on, uh, on Botsify platform. So thank you again for coming. And yeah, I would like to invite uh, the next speaker. Actually, he came uh, here from quite far away, from Toulouse, yes, from France. So Alex, uh, he makes uh, here internship. I'm his supervisor. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's a lawyer and he started uh, to learn coding Python. So, please welcome him. Thanks, Martinas. Hello, everybody. So, like Martinas say, I'm a law student in Toulouse. So, don't blame me too much if there is any problem in IT or everything. I'm not perfect. So, first, uh, who knows what a chatbot here? I think some people probably know. So according to Gartner, 85% of customer interaction will be managed without a human by 2020. So technology is evolving really fast. And for now, chatbot, we're only testing. So what's a chatbot? That's the question. The chatbot, it's a conversational agent that interacts with the users in certain domain. So it's it's like a software, it's a program which is used to, to behave like a human. The first chatbot was Eliza, the most famous one in 1966. So it was created by Joseph Weisenberg, an MIT researcher. It was using therapy technique to make the patient talk. It won the first, first, first one uh, Lobner Prize competition. And, uh, and after, he, he wants some stuff. So why chatbot are rising today? Because it's not like new, it's not just I've been creating, it's something which is already old. So first, social media and messenger applications are taking a huge place on the internet today, on the internet market. It's, it's not anymore something for teenagers. And companies will realize that in um, 2018, in, um, there is a, it's 1.47 users on Facebook every day. So it's a lot. And companies see that, of course. Also, artificial intelligence is the future. Of course, everybody knows that. You don't have to look for the information to research it anymore. You have some examples like Alexa or Google Home. It's, for now, it's still limited because it's evolving. But in the future, it will take a huge place in our lives. And with Chatbot, it gave the possibility to send a personalized message. It's a real, real marketing opportunity for the companies because until now, they were sending like in websites or they were trying to touch with a TV or anything. But then now they will send advertisement personally just for you. And it can be applied in so many areas. There are so many possibilities. You can use it in after sales service, um, advancement, product recommendation. I, I, I passed because I wouldn't have the time to say everything. So, like you can say, this is a, some chatbot benefits for business. It can process, process simplification, use experience improvement, personal care improvement, personalized service, service integration opportunity are also 
Rust is heavy because chatbots, yeah, it's not, it's cheap, can be really cheap. So I will give you some examples. So it's not like really famous chatbot, but first you have, for example, the Wall Street Journal, like you will start to speak to him and he will send you informations and you will ask, like, for example, latest news. It can take time, the internet. And he send you, like, the latest news. And you, you can specify exactly what you want. You don't have to look for the information anymore. You also have this chatbot, like, which is named Dinner's Idea. So you start it, and it sends you ideas of dinner every day. If you want a special re receipt with any ingredient, you ask, for example, pasta, it will give you something with pasta. You say, sure, once a day, and it gives you everything you want. You have also this bot, like Murphy bot, which is pretty uh, absolutely useless. It, you use a what if question, you ask, what if, for example, Not the good one. You're talking the idea. Yeah, yeah, I know, I see. <laughs> yeah, the other one won't do anything with that. So yeah, it will send you a picture. It's not really good, but it's doing something. So, very, very different way. What now? I will talk more about legal bots because that's the topic. So we, I'm going to talk about chatbots in the legal area. So what about chatbots in the legal area? What can they do for lawyers? They can help to find first the relevant attorney, which is really important. In law, there is a lot of specialists. It's kind of like in medicine because they. Law is so huge now that we need tests and uh, we need every, a lot of specialists. And with a chatbot, it can guide you to find the relevant attorney for that. Also, it can give the greatest access to law, a better epistemology of law. So what do I mean by that? The law is dark, and even for lawyers, it is often complicated to understand. So for person who don't understand anything about law, it's really complicated. And it always has been the job of lawyer to simplify and to help the common person to understand it. And how can you do that with chatbot? Chatbot can give quick personalized and uh, without any appointment. So some person, they know they need a lawyer, so they go to see a lawyer. But there are some person, they don't know. So they just want a quick analyze, and chatbot can give them a correct analyze. And if they need more, it will add, it will advise them to call a lawyer. I hope so. <laughs> also, it allows the faculty to be discreet, because today, what we want is to not have our name everywhere, not uh, have been asking everything we do. We would like to a private life. And GDPR is a, a big example of that. And with chatbot, you don't need to give the name. You don't give to. You don't need to give anything. You just call. You say what's your problem, and it will help you to find how to solve it. And if you can't, again, it will. A lot. It will tell you to call a lawyer. It will. It can also give the customer in a better way than the law web, the law firm website, because. You can go on a lot of uh, law firm website, mostly you, if you don't know anything about law, you won't understand anything. So with a chatbot, it can guide you how to look for the information. So I will show you some legal chatbot. You have do not pay. I don't know if anyone knows do not pay. It's like the most, the most famous one. So it can find proper defense for your parking ticket. 
He also now applying for flight airline compensation. And in the other area, like immigration, to sort of aid is expanding. So I will show you after how it works. You have VisaBot who create immigration form and generate cover letters. He send text to client and lawyers will receive the application already filled. You also have Lodori. Lodori is, is uh, incorporating your company in a smartphone, he organize lawyers, create a schedule, and record not create an asset tax. It's like a personal assistant for lawyers. And you have a lot of other examples, but for now there is not that much legal thought. They are starting to rise and there is a lot of prototype in uh, which are coming. There is like driver bot who is an um, assist driver with uh, their monitoring law question, or Parker who give basic answer to law about GDPR. Uh, there is also healthcare insurance chatbot. You have Lexi who create a privacy policy of non-disclosure agreement. You have solo suits which is expert system that under that law in new town. So some prototypes, you have um, experimental prototypes like on Devon Chatbot, which is the creator of uh, Laundry. You have also processes with, which is actually attempt to make prediction uses case data. So I'm really waiting to see this one to see how it's work because it looks interesting. And you have also Lexix, Lexi, who is testing, testing actually chatbot for lawyers. So chatbots are really cheap to create. And for example, for me, it took me 20 minutes to understand how to create one. Of course, a basic one, not a, a deep learning one, you know, like a big artificial intelligence, but really with simple tasks and for free. So I will present you my chatbot. So I go on it. Like I say, so Demare is starting French for people who want to know. So, okay, I say something, and with the keywords I say, I'm going to answer. And he's going to say, okay, I'm presenting you the first legal box. And after, you can say, And he send you another one, and it's really simple. So, like you say, it's really simple. But after the bot, if you say anything he don't know, like for example, it will say you like a default answer. So. <laughs> So let's go on do not pay, which is the most famous one. So for parking ticket. So let's say my car has been stolen. So like you see, there is the bot. Welcome, I'm a bot to help you. Okay. Um, what is the number of tickets? I can put actually anything because it's not like a big artificial intelligence. It's more using keyword. So it will answer anything I say. So. When was your vehicle stolen? Let's say. Okay, thanks. What was the date uh, of the ticket? Uh, I'm not. I'm really not used to this keyboard. We don't have the same in France. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are using Azerty in French, so really sorry for that. So which is the police station? You put Vilnius, okay. When did you report it? Um, okay. Okay, and he send you the documents. Like, okay. And like you say, he send you the documents already done, and you can just, he has filled all the information for you, and you just have to send it anymore to local authorities. So it's really simple. 
So also, you have someone who is about GDPR. So probably most of people here know about the GDPR. It makes some noise about that. So, so yes. So it will tell you, OK, how to manage with GDPR. And you say, OK, no. And it will ask you some basic question to know if you your available, uh, your, um, you have to, uh, GDPR is applying for you. So let's say don't know. Now I just say yes. And at the end you say, okay, you probably have to use GDPR. But for one who knows a bit about GDPR, like most everybody have to use GDPR now. <laughs> so. And you have also this one where to, to create a privacy so, so disclosure, so pre create a privacy for your website. So you go, you say some stuff, okay, you give the name of the website and everything is working the same. At the end, it sends you everything you need for. So it's really simple to use and you don't have to call a lawyer, you don't have to do anything else, you just have to talk with the board for simple things. And there is some easy website to create, like Botify or Chatfuel is for creating really simple chatbots, that, like I did just before. It's pretty really cheap. Like you can have a chatbot for $20 a month. Like it's really nothing when you know that normally you can spend for, for service, uh, after service, you can pay something like uh, 1,200 euros per person. So. You have also IBM Watson Assistant and Microsoft Azure, Azure uh, which are more important. It's more, you need to know how to code for them. And um, they get you to create a chatbot. So let's talk about some chatbot challenge now. So first, policies on chatbot, GDPR, protection of data and customer information. So there's some question to come with that. Is the data collected by a chatbot is well protected? Is there any agreement um, for the data protection? What about the right to be forgotten, including the GDPR? Because of chatbot, we don't have the question we have on the websites. Um, mm. Also, where is going the data collecting by chatbot? It, it's a really good question. How company will use it? Um, are they respecting the GDPR? Well, now about the disclaimer. There is an important topic about that because it's evolving. And what if the bot has understood wrong information? And for example, he ordered you a flight ticket, but you didn't want it. But he ordered it because he has every information to do it. So who is responsible? The bot, the company, the user? Can we use the conversation uh, with the bot as a proof? There is some legal question about that. Also. The most important, I would say, is wrong legal advice. What if a chatbot gives you wrong legal advice? Again, who is responsible for that? And how do we prove how far it can go? Where, what is the line between um, the effectivity of a bot and the necessity of a human? This is a really important question. And also, copyright content. Is the general copyright applied to the chatbot? Like, can the programs be similar on what would be based the corporate for chatbot? Because programmers will want to protect what they do. And so to end, I would like to talk to you about uh, the chatbot take tweet. I don't know, um, probably uh, some of you heard about it. It was a chatbot Microsoft created and uh, for Twitter, for social media. And in eight, it was really using deep learning, so it was taking initiating and learn from what user was saying. And in eight hours, it went completely crazy. And it became like a racist, misogynist, and uh, which were saying sentences like, fuck my robot pussy, that you have such a bad Nazi robot. So yeah, for now, chatbots really can have limits. And this is important to understand that. So. so Thanks for your time, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope there is not too uh, many uh, many error on IT. And uh, thanks. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, you was very quick. Still, we have two minutes for questions. Do we have any questions? Please? Yeah, so uh, something came to my curiosity. Uh, why would you do something that would limit your job and would limit your customers? Like in the future, I would not go for a lawyer. I would just use this, improve the chat box, get uh, what I need, and then do my uh, file. So what do you mean exactly? You would just go this, to the chat This box? chatbot, you are giving him everything. You are giving him everything, like you are programming it. Okay, mm -hmm. and one day it's going to replace your job. It's going to become the lawyer. Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> uh -huh. It's not possible because, like, even if there is a, a lot of things, like law is just not something straight. Yes. So I don't know for how it happened in Lithuania, but in France, uh, like, uh, we have something called jurisprudence, which yes. is really important, especially in administrative law. And it's based on every case, on everything, and it's more based on what the judge wants at the end. Yes. So, no, like a chatbot can help for now, at least, on um, on basic stuff, like yes. filling some documents. So it, it's really helpful for a lawyer. But I don't know what to say about what's, um, what what, what's going to be when artificial intelligence, intelligence. will be really improved. Yes. Yeah, I, uh, I can answer the, this question. And um, it's there for every job, yes. and we're gonna all lose our job, of course, uh, if you if you go in this way. But for now, uh, I see them more as an assistant than anything. Yes, thank you. Okay. How are you? Uh, yeah, short question: Like yeah? you would think that we can have some troubles with the legal state of this uh, boss? And for example, uh, some huge companies are using this boss today. And for example, if the bot gives uh, some wrong advice to a user. For today, who is responsible for that? I can't really answer for that because there is not that much case. Uh, but for example, uh, it's really the board gives the wrong advice, user do something, and there is, for example, uh, money loss. But he lost uh, 100 euros because of uh, bot's mistakes. Mm -hmm. Then who is responsible for this 100 euros? Yeah. Boss, company, user? Yeah, that's, I understand it. That's a really good question. I would but like to know. Today, uh, it, it's yeah, for, for today, it's really complicated to know because like, it's not even really industrialized that much. It's starting to rise, like I say, in, uh, in the first because uh, companies realized uh, that it was important today with social media and everything. So there is not that much juridical case to, to know, to, to say what is going to be exactly. So. I can talk about French law. In French law, if there is any problem with um, with um, with an object or anything, it's uh, the person who creates it. So, but will it be that? Like, I would like to you if I say yes. I can't know because it's more complicated questions. Yeah. So thank you. It's not an easy answer. We will have discussion uh, after the presentations. So we can uh, continue on that. So, because we will have also one online presentation, so we're a bit uh, strict on time. Okay, so I apologize. And I want to welcome, so thank you, Alex. <laughs> thank you. I want to welcome a very nice guy from uh, Hilde IT. So it's a very well-known uh, company for Lithuanians, uh, the first keyboard. Uh, Lithuanian language, if I on the right, was yeah, uh, made was. by Tilda. So they are working on language technologies. So please welcome. Yeah. <laughs> the floor is yeah, thank, you, thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, first of all, it's nice to see you all here. Uh, actually, it's a little bit strange to, to present Lithuanian language technologies in English. But well, uh, I know that we have uh, uh, people who doesn't speak Lithuanian. Some part of this presentation may be uh, maybe can look strange a little bit, but uh, it's okay. So um, probably I have to tell some joke. Yes, at the at the beginning of presentation, but <laughs> you know, um, chatbots are, are not joke, and uh, as curiously. Uh, you mentioned that bot that was created, a uh, self-learning bot. Uh, he was really, really bad at, at, at learning. And actually, users 
were really bad at, at teaching him to do those wrong things. But from our experience, uh, what I can tell, what was funny for us, um, when we announced a chatbot for uh, for uh, uh, in Latvian market, um, uh, the the most common uh, question to the bot was, uh, "Is there a God?" So uh, that was interesting for for many people. Is there a God? I don't know what kind of answer they, they, they would like to get in this. But still, so a um, little bit about uh, our company. Uh, we're working in, we, uh, in Baltics, in Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Our headquarters are in, in Latvia and Lithuania. We have, uh, uh, in our office, we have 25, 27 uh, persons uh, daily working with the, with the uh, language technologies localization. So our uh, business is localization. Uh, we are localizing uh, mainly technical things like uh, software, like uh, uh, manuals of some kind of tracks and something. So uh, we, are local, we have localized for many years uh, Microsoft uh, and Google uh, products uh, and many, many others. And another field of uh, our company is uh, language technology. So. Uh, many years we're working with language technologies. Uh, we have started with a, with a keyboard for Lithuanian language because nobody has uh, the, the special symbol on, on keyboard. Then we, we created uh, the language technologies product in, in one place in these bureaus uh, where we collected uh, spell checker, grammar checker for Lithuanian language, uh, many dictionaries, uh, term dictionaries and so on, and then presented it for, for, for uh, users use species uh, and now uh, we are moving to, to, to new world uh, uh, we are not starting we cannot say that we're not we are starting we are working already with uh, with new technologies uh, and those new technologies mainly are based on, uh, on artificial intelligence or neural networks uh, at this moment uh, we are working with uh, uh, machine translation uh, that is already based on neural networks and actually it's really really better than, than, than statistical uh, uh, machine translation we're working on uh, speech uh, speech technologies uh, and also uh, on, on chatbots or conversation conversational assistants so today we're going to talk about uh, mainly about uh, chatbots and technologies what we have done in this uh, I'll show you an example. Uh, well, let's move forward. So, um, Alex, you presented uh, what is artificial intelligence, uh, what is chatbot, so probably I, I'll not stop on this, but uh, actually the main, uh, uh, the main progress was made on artificial intelligence when uh, really powerful, powerful uh, graphical cars were released by, by and Nvidia GeForce or some or another manufacturers. So uh, we have possibility to train really, uh, really uh, uh, serious uh, uh, neural network based systems uh, uh, using this hardware. So, uh, so actually, everybody talks about chatbots, Cortana, Google, uh, that famous movie, her. Uh, by the way, if you haven't seen this movie, just take a look, you will see how future looks like. Uh, what is most important for, uh, for chatbots? It's language, definitely. So if we talk about English language uh, today, uh, a lot of things, a lot of platforms, a lot of uh, uh, various uh, applications uh, already prepared for English language. But when we talk about uh, smaller languages like Lithuanian, Latvian, Estonian, and, and, and other languages uh, that has low resources, that has no, no so big potential in, in, in the world scale, so uh, uh, it's it's more or less um, empty market there. So and um, so why why do we need this uh, chatbots and why it's uh, this this market is booming so fast? Uh, in all the world, not not just in Lithuania. So actually, our customers uh, they would like to have some assistance uh, that that is working 24 hours uh, 
uh, and seven days per, per week. Uh, they would like to increase their efficiency. They can sell, pre-sell, and they can use it for, for e-commerce and, and, and brand awareness and so on. So let's go a little bit uh, and talk a little bit about chatbots and uh, the generations of chatbots, uh, how we see those, uh, uh, how technologies are improving, improving and, and uh, in what in what place we are uh, we are seeing we are right now in, with the with the small languages. So first one generation is simple guided dialogue. Uh, uh, the the use case could be that uh, you are coming about saying okay I know the answers in, uh, on three topics. Uh, you you have to choose one of them. You are choosing and then he is guiding you to to, to some three based. Uh, uh, questions answering uh, uh, you know, the, the way, and then at the end you, you are receiving the, the answer. So this is the simplest bot, and you can do it uh, uh, with uh, many platforms uh, at this moment. Uh, next one is uh, the bot can understand the natural language. So inside he has he he already has some. Uh, pre-trained models that can understand uh, natural language it means that you can formulate your, your questions in three ways. So you are coming, but saying, okay, I'm bot, uh, please you can ask me about something. And you are typing, and chatbot uh, understand what you are typing. Uh, generation three is uh, almost the same, just the one difference is that uh, the, the new bot can, can remember what you you said previously. So, uh, if you if you say that uh, I would like to go uh, from Vilnius to Kolnas, and then you 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 were also uh, writing that uh, I'd like to buy a ticket, he understands that you'd like to buy a ticket from Vilnius to Kolnas. So consecutive consecutive dialogue uh, dialogue uh, and possibility to to have this dialogue with chatbot is is really important. And generation four is uh, okay. This bot has no limits, and uh, usually we talk about bot that where we have input in, in text, we are texting, or on Messenger, Skype, or Viber on other platforms. But usually, actually, we we can add uh, many different technologies how to input uh, this uh, text by voice. We can input uh, the text by voice. Uh, it's chatbot can synthesize uh, the answer uh, you can interact uh, in different in many ways for example some robots can can read your uh, your face uh, directly to make uh, face recognition to make uh, uh, voice recognition uh, emotions recognition and so on so yeah it has no limit actually so and about examples um, I'm going to talk about examples that our company has already done and then main those examples are uh, have been done in Latvian market because they are colleagues in Latvia. They have started uh, uh, earlier, uh, and uh, our, all researchers team, the main team is in Latvia, so they prepared uh, everything for Latvian language. And now we are moving to Lithuania. So the the first one uh, Q and A questions and answers bot was uh, prepared for Latvian national li library. You can ask questions about. Uh, 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 visiting, visiting hours about the books that they have and so on. So, but this is just uh, that generation one um, chatbot. Second one chatbot, uh, the, the smart chatbot was implemented for for our client uh, Lab Telecom. Uh, the chatbot uh, was uh, developed to, to to have possibility to answer uh, two questions, not two questions, but two domains. One domain was frequently asked questions about uh, technical problems and second domain was about pricing uh, he was able to answer uh, those questions and um, uh, the, the technology behind was uh, like a hybrid uh, you can freely formulate questions uh, to the bot the bot can understand your questions and he can switch to the guided dialogue if he knows that you you would like to go uh, uh, in, uh, you have Possibilities to go different ways, so it's much uh, smarter. And uh, one more chatbot. Uh, it was developed uh, many years ago. 
for English language. He was trained on Wikipedia data, and he's available on, on uh, Apple Store, on, on Android Store. Uh, you can talk. It just this bot has been done just for fun to see how we can implement uh, the communication, the voice input communication, the, the engine, the train engine, uh, even for uh, English language to, to, to see by ourselves, can we do this uh, or not? So if you would like, you can, you can download that. Actually, the, uh, this, uh, this chatbot, Laura, uh, she is quite popular. So, and uh, one more use case that we released uh, few months ago uh, is uh, uh, Virtual Assistant Una. Uh, that Virtual Assistant was uh, developed for Latvish Latin Center of Registers and he... Um, okay, so about, uh, about background, why it was developed. Uh, it was developed because uh, yeah, the call center and uh, the people who is working in this uh, center, uh, they, they were receiving not where receiving, they, they are receiving still now a lot of uh, queries from, from clients and uh, many of those queries are uh, repeatable, so uh, almost the same, the same answers every day, every day, every day, so sometimes people are yeah, going crazy because they have to answer the same questions, so uh, the, 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 there was a decision to uh, to create this bot, uh, and also uh, he is going. To, this bot can provide client support 24/7. Uh, he can reduce workload uh, and actually, yes, increase client satisfaction. So what we have done, uh, we created this chatbot Una uh, that communicates in Latvian, available uh, uh, in in two channels. One channel is uh, on Messenger, and second one on web page. Uh, he's the, the latest one product of, of our company, and we we think that it, we we have done good job because uh, this is uh, also uh, um, hybrid uh, chatbot. Like uh, uh, you can uh, you can ask questions in free form. He can understand the intent you would like to uh, to, to to say to him. Uh, or he is answering the, the question, or he is suggesting the, the, the different way to go. So this is um, how it looks um, on, on that page. Uh, and actually, uh, if we talk about uh, the content, uh, so it's interesting thing. It's uh, it's it's practical experience. Uh, it has this bot has three topics and he's able to talk in three topics. One topic is how to register a company, how to, second topic is <coughs> liquidate company, and third topic is uh, to check your document status. So, kind of, uh, everything should be clear. But <laughs> as we see, 44% of queries uh, was not about those topics. So it means that people like to interact with the, with the chatbots, and uh, uh, in future, uh, if you will be involved in chatbot development, uh, uh, those uh, projects, uh, make sure that we'll you are covering those uh, common asked questions, not about the domain you are creating, about the God. Yeah. So, uh, what is behind this? Uh, behind this is platform that we have created uh, by ourselves. Okay, it's like. Uh, um, no. Uh, we are looking at uh, at uh, global uh, service providers, uh, those chatbot service providers, and creating something that, that would fit our uh, client requirements. And we have developed this platform, but now uh, we are improving. Uh, and every day when we are communicating with the clients, we are improving this platform. Um, this platform can do many things, uh, but. The major things uh, what what uh, what client can do client can uh, can can do bot management uh, with no needs uh, uh, of program programming knowledge. That's really uh, important because uh, it, uh, client uh, usually client dedicates 
people who are working in, in call center, for example, the, the, the girls uh, who is uh, communicating with clients every day by phone, by email, by chat. So uh, programming, not, not for, for those people. And it's important to have a user-friendly interface that people can, can do uh, all things by themselves. And actually, they can, they can view uh, the conversation that is going on. They can take over conversation. They can release conversation if they, they see that bot is OK or he is answered by themselves. They can improve the bot uh, through platform and, uh, and so on and so on. And um, in this platform, we have natural language processing and natural language understanding uh, like modules for five languages at this moment. So Ukrainian, Latvian, Estonian, English, and, and Russian languages. Uh, how this platform looks? <laughs> OK. Uh, sorry, for, for this view, I have Like this. So there is nothing important that uh, it shows that we can um, user can easily add uh, the questions, potential questions that uh, that uh, the customers are asking, and potential answers that customers are asking. And uh, after this, uh, they they are making dialogue structure, and then and saying uh, not not saying but training model. Um, uh, which uh, which gives an answer for for, for future uh, uh, users. So an example is if uh, at the end of day uh, people are sitting and, and reviewing the conversations that uh, that was discussed between chatbot and, and customer, and uh, manager can decide that okay this uh, this question is not in our bot bot cannot answer this question. He is adding these questions. He is adding an answer. A short uh, bot uh, should answer, and then the retraining model, and bot became uh, uh, smarter. It's not self-learning, uh, and uh, we cannot say that it's uh, learning by them uh, by himself. So uh, people has to uh, has to teach this one. And um, well, and uh, at the end of the day. Uh, we have the, the visualization visualization of chatbot uh, dialogue structure. This dialogue structure is uh, kind of complicated, but still, it doesn't need programming uh, skills. Uh, you have to just uh, train people how to interact with this uh, with this visualization, how to change things, uh, and that's it. That's it. You can you can manage your own bot. So, what about Lithuanian language? As I mentioned before, uh, we don't have like uh, a project that I can show you uh, today. Uh, they are under development right now. But for Lithuanian language, we have a natural language. For Lithuanian language, we have uh, those models that can understand uh, uh, what is written in, in free form, uh, natural language understanding uh, module. And he can extract from, from that uh, question or from that text the intent you would like, or if you wanted to say, or you wanted to get some interaction or something. So, and also, we have many natural language processing tools like, uh, uh, like well, name it, uh, tokenizer, morphology analysis, syntactic analysis, things, uh, and so on. So, uh, those are in, in this platform. And also, we are proud of um, one really big progress we have done in a few years. It's uh, speech recognition for Lithuanian language. Um, many tries in the Lithuanian market was to, 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 to prepare or to develop a good product that can, can be able to understand Lithuanian language. Uh, but still, um, and yeah, we, we, we have created this. And uh, actually, um, when we talk about chatbot, uh, the, the first thing uh, for the future, um, uh, if you will be involved in, in those uh, initiatives and our projects, the first thing is to, to, to create a chatbot that interacts uh, text-to. You, you, you give input just in text, 
and uh, receive an input in text. After this, you can add uh, additional technologies like uh, speech recognition, like uh, speech synthesis. Uh, in Lithuania, speech synthesis uh, um, has been done a few years ago and really good quality by Vilnius University Mathematical, Mathematical Institute and uh, under the project LEPA. And actually, we are using their engine, and uh, it's free of charge. Uh, if you would like to integrate somewhere, uh, speech synthesis uh, is uh, free of charge. But when we talk about speech uh, recognition, it's more sophisticated task. Um, but I would like to show you some examples. Um, do you have many people who doesn't understand Lithuanian? Yes. So, so you can just relax and yeah, you can take your time. Uh, sweets. Um, I have, probably we don't need to see all, all of them. We have annual report of our president, uh, the late Uh and yeah, let's take a look. She she is talking actually really uh, good way. She's pronouncing everything like. Major. It's automatically done. Actually, I have uploaded the file and we received this result. That's it. We have a dictation system uh, uh, for Android. You can download it and whatnot uh, on the Google Apps. Uh, it can recognize when you talk. You can dictate uh, short messages, emails. Uh, uh, the text where to go, oh, okay. so, uh, how to show it. But uh, no, probably on presentation view, so I have to turn off presentation view. So, I'm talking to you, you have said. So, taking into account that this automatically processed data, uh, this speech recognizer has accuracy about 85%. Uh, it tries to restore uh, the punctuation, the, the other symbols, uh, you know, the, the understand the sentence boundaries sometimes, but sometimes it depends. But what is uh, the main thing the uh, speech recognizer is doing is to recognize and make it plain text. Just. Okay, let's, let's check different uh, examples. For example, uh, this is uh, today a lot Lithuanian radio, Lithuanian television news today morning. Lavasitas Lietuvoje 8 valandos metas žiniomis. Seimo šiandien priėmi sprendimus dėl kitą metą vyksiančių rinkimų datų. Savi valdybių tarybų rinkimai numatyti kovo trečią dieną. Prezidento Gegužės Biliktoje, Europos parlamento rinkimų data numatyta Gegužės 26-oji. Savi valdybių šį rytį pietų Korėjos prezidentas mums džia inas pirmą kartą lankosi Šiaurės Korėjos sosinėje okay, so, ne, ir susitinkas. Uh, so that was an example how speech recognition can, can perform. Um, Actually, if we combine those uh, three technologies, we will receive the, the chatbot that would be able to understand what you are talking, to, to give an answer, and to give, give this, an, this answer in, in, in Lithuanian speech that you can hear. So, I think that's all I wanted to say. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I just got uh, some message from uh, our presenters from Ukraine, uh, so they asked for extra 10 minutes, so we can have a discussion. Uh, of course. Of course. Yeah. So if you have some questions, yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, it was a silly question. Uh, I think 
uh, when you show the demo, it is with uh, uh, recognition. But uh, is it possible to impersonate, for example, train them by uh, uh, recreating exactly the same voice and speaking like that person? <laughs> Uh, I know what you are talking about. Uh, uh, Google has made this kind of uh, synthesis, uh, speech synthesis thing that uh, it's almost <clears throat> you cannot recognize that it's, uh, it's synthesized. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, you can hear it like a uh, like real person. Actually, no, we're not doing those uh, things. In, and for the Twain language, we have many issues with the uh, speech recognition with different voices, with different accents, uh, with uh, different noises in the background. So there are plenty to work around this. Yeah. And how fast it works, for example? Is it possible to translate real live streaming with subtitles? Um, speech recognition works uh, uh, in, in, in the good uh, environment. Uh, in 0 0.5 real time. It means that, yeah, he can perform like this. So if you say one second word, mm -hmm. he can uh, give back in, in half second. So if you uh, send one minute uh, audio to, to the system, after a half minute, he, he is uh, giving you back a, a result. So if we talk about real time uh, transcription, it's okay, it works. Uh, you can download an Android phone, fill these pulses. Uh, try to, to do this uh, in, in a live environment. Did you start from now handling the legal issues of such uh, chatbots? Like those bots are going to be smarter than us, way smarter than us? No way. <laughs> now, no. not we, but, uh, but the world is starting right now from, from scratch and, and there, there is no such uh, artificial intelligence can can beat human. For example, we are working many years in machine translation. And when I first met uh, one government organization uh, translators, and they said, uh, "Let's take a look on machine translation suggestions. They can give you suggestions, uh, not just from translation memories, but uh, from machine translation." And one uh, one girl said, "Okay, I'll be fired." No, 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 you will not be fired. You are uh, you are going to. Um, it can meet us in a way or another. How many languages do you speak? I'm? Yes. Russian, French, English, Lithuanian. Yeah. Okay. French. French. So French. let's Maybe teach this boat two other languages. Let's make this boat speak Russian, Lithuanian, English, Italian, Spanish, and French, and Arabic. So this boat defeated us. Okay, if we talk about. Uh, about those things, about yes. speaking languages, about how fast you can do the decisions and so on. But if we talk about our working places, no, he will not. Uh, we have to. Like for, for example, our translators became post editors. Yes. They are not translating anymore like translators yes. do. They are doing post editing tasks and they are doing this task much, much faster than previously. That's it. They are doing much. Bigger data. Those who don't uh, who do uh, interpretation, I think they will lose their jobs also. <laughs> so you That's the law. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it depends. If you are talking with uh, Trump and Putin, so probably interpretation interpreter would be necessary. Yeah. yeah. I did not understand the details of your two last uh, presentation of two last uh, talk. It seems that you had already had president's talk. Yes. Yes. So I what you this are morning. demonstrating was simply, simply following and verifying voice with already in advance synthesized text. Something. No, no, no. It, actually, I, I can tell you a workflow how how this can this has been done. Yeah. Um, let's take a look on this. What I can do, I can upload a file. You, you, you see, if I take the Novia file up, I can upload uh, MP3s or different format file, which is recorded, for example, uh, yeah, speech of our president. And uh, I'm, I'm receiving the result uh, to, to email. And then I, I'm receiving the, the link to the result. This result is hosted on, on cloud. 
and I can just click on this result and see the, the, the job that was done. And why following? Because um, it's important to see what was recognized and what was missed. For example, in this case, we can uh, download, remember, we uploaded audio file, and now we are downloading uh, text, text, textual file. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now clear. We probably have to open a notepad, so let's take a look. Yes. This is subtitles file. It has timestamps. It means that you can put this file on. Maybe internet mm -hmm. is slow now. Okay, probably internet is slow and uh, we have to wait. But actually, what, what it has, it has a time tag and then sentence. Time tag and sentence. We can put this uh, file as subtitles file, file uh, on the video uh, we have. For example, for people who is uh, impaired, who, who is not, not hearing well, uh, they can just uh, upload uh, audio file the, the news, for example, uh, and, and they will be, uh, they can be the, the How accurate is it that you use not the news people and so on, just like the normal audio file? Yes. For example, we record what we talk today and we transcribe. Yes, or yes, yes, how, of course. How big of a loss Re is it? Recognition depends on, uh, on uh, uh, recording quality how far you are from, from the microphone, uh, how, how big uh, uh, you know, surrounding sounds are, and for example, and uh, how many people are talking at once. Yeah? But usually, when I talk about uh, accuracy, I said 80%. It means that in general domain, uh, in general situations. So sometimes it works really uh, bad, for example, if we have really not uh, not usual surroundings. Uh, uh, we are driving a car with open window. We are talking uh, to the microphone, which is uh, located uh, you know, one meter from far, far from me. So the quality could be 50%, so it's crap, yeah? But uh, those recordings that are recorded in a in, in, in good environment, like uh, you saw here, they are probably 98% uh, so, you know. Yes? So maybe there is a API that uh, could be used automatically, not by clicking download it, to get the transcription. <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, all our platforms uh, uh, can be called by API, and actually uh, we are doing everything uh, in that way. For example, at this moment, we have one client in Lithuania. This is uh, uh, Kantar TNS, they are media monitoring, biggest media monitoring company in Lithuania. They they are using our API and they are calling our services on cloud. We have many engines running uh, simultaneously uh, at once. They are calling, they are making those transcriptions, they are putting those transcriptions on the server, they are searching, they are preparing results for the client, you know. Uh, for example, in the news, uh, somebody mentioned BMW you as a client, like uh, Rust Auto, the uh, uh, dealers in Lithuania, the, the manager uh, receives an email that, look, uh, five minutes ago in Lithuania news, uh, BMW was mentioned. So it's, it's, it's nice. Uh, people cannot do this. I saw that the previous uh, workflow, how they were doing this. So students were sitting um, uh, in the room they, they, they were sitting around the four uh, monitors and uh, looking at four uh, uh, live, uh, not live, but recorded uh, uh, videos at once and they were monitoring uh, about 200 words. I, I, could, I could, be, could be wrong, but right now they are, record, uh, they are monitoring uh, not everything, but uh, much, much. Uh, we are talking about chatbots or speech recognition? Speech recognition. Uh, okay, the data. Data, data, data. 
data always is uh, the most important thing to, to have to be developed in, in, in a good way. So if you prepare good data, your network can follow them and can learn a lot from the data. But for example, if, uh, uh, if we talk about um, <laughs> statistical based uh, technologies and right now neural network based technologies, statistical based technologies uh, say okay about 5% of data could be cracked. That's it. Don't worry. I will, I will help. But right now it's, it doesn't work like this. You have to prepare good data and that, that is the challenge, the main challenge. This would be, should be annotated in a, in a good way, you know, the, the, the sound and the working text. Why did you consider putting Una in the first uh, chatbot in, in English? Why you chose only Lithuanian? Uh, Una is Latvian yes. chatbot because yes. the, the client is in Latvia. Uh -huh. So uh, it, the chatbot was created for Latvian language. Uh, we have no chatbots in Lithuania right now uh, developed till then. So as I said, we are working with a few uh, clients we are developing right now, but they cannot show uh, the persons. Yeah. Uh, another question about uh, chatbots. Uh, how deep chatbot can understand the, I mean, the context? Uh, for example, if you uh, chat into the bot, uh, uh, so uh, people ask one question, chatbot uh, answers, and how deep this conversation can, can go deep uh, with the uh, context? Okay, chatbot, uh, uh, we talk about chatbot, how, how smart it is. Uh, we have to understand that uh, we are, as users, as clients, we are creating the, the chatbot brains. So uh, if we train the chatbot in narrow domain, and, and, and we will put all our effort on this, he can, be, he can understand a lot. Yes, and he can uh, uh, see differences between uh, your uh, questions if uh, even one word is a little bit different and he, he would suggest a different answer and so on. But if we train the, the general domain bot, he actually he doesn't go any, any, and doesn't answer any deep questions or, or, uh, or you know, it just it can be just just for fun, but not doing real job. Uh, usually when we are creating the chatbot for clients, we say, uh, let's concentrate on the uh, biggest pain you have. Biggest, because uh, you have to call your people who is communicating every day with the, with the clients who are creating marketing messages, who are developing IT systems, and those people have to agree about one, two, or three maximum topics. So that's, that's the idea of the channel. Yeah. So thank yeah, you thank very much. So if we still have time to join our discussion. Yes, yes. So I will be here. You are very welcome. Okay. And just I got a message that uh, Ukraine is ready. OK. Hello. Hi. Hi. Just one moment. I will make the sound better. Okay, so I will turn off uh, our video. So you are welcome to start your presentation. Can, can we see an auditory first? For, for a second, just to say hello. Uh, <laughs> what to do? Uh, can you turn camera to the auditory for us to say hello? All right, yeah, sure. <laughs> hello, guys. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> uh, all right.
Uh, so let us begin. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. So um, while Lera is trying to turn off the presentation, uh, I'll start. Uh, my name is Artem Akhan. Uh, I'm a managing partner of uh, Uspul and Uh This is uh, Valeria Dechenko. Uh, I assume you know her already. He, she is the head of TMT practice. And today we're going to tell you about our uh, experience with legal chatbots, how we came to this, and uh, uh, what we already figured about uh, this whole thing. Uh, at first, a few words about your school law firm. We just turned 10, so it's been 10 years on uh, Ukrainian market. This uh, Our company exists already. We are focused on uh, all, everything related with tech. So it's like FinTech, investment, uh, JAR, uh, telecom, and other things. Uh, and of course, working so much time with the guys who are coding, we couldn't uh, resist to it. So like a virus, it also infected us. And we started thinking about ourselves as a kind of developer. And we tried uh, to develop our own product. So le let me first, uh, I I'll try to explain you why we think that uh, robots will re replace uh, a huge amount of uh, legal job. So I can't see you right now, but uh, please, uh, could you turn to your neighbor and, and watch all over the auditory and uh, try to answer me um, how much people are wearing clothes uh, that is not produced in fabric. No, thank you, I actually don't need it. Thank you. So, uh, so please, raise a, raise a hand who is wearing only fabric clothes and, food and shoes. So not made by tailor and not made uh, specifically for you. So you just bought it in a shop. Who is wearing uh, clothes uh, bought in the shop? So I think like everybody, yeah? Yes. So it means that we all um, are dealing with the weather, uh, with the fashion, we express ourselves, and uh, it also related that uh, our bodies are totally different with something made by fabric. Uh, and uh, then let us ask ourselves, um, are people needs in legal services more complicated than uh, needs in clothes? I think no. I think what we need, what mostly people need, are like... Uh, quite fabric contracts, uh, documents, and consultants. So it's quite simple. Uh, that led us to the thing that we could automate a lot of processes and save uh, our time, save uh, our clients money. And actually, I like so much more that uh, work is for robots and life is for people. So. Uh, we have some uh, ideas also, not, not only about clothes, but uh, main ideas what brought us to the legal tech. So we feel that uh, current status in uh, legal services is a huge waste of human potential. So like very intelligent, very smart, bright-minded people are uh, finishing law school and then waste their life just to fill up quite simple forms or making quite uh, simple or the same contract during years. Uh, as a result, the cost of legal services is very high and people need to pay uh, the salary of a lawyer and uh, when the lawyer becomes older, the, the, more, uh, the more he charges to his client. Uh, but it doesn't mean that he becomes smarter. Uh, and also that brings uh, to a lack of simplicity and to use the friendless and legal services. We can't say that you, uh, legal services are now user-friendly. Because, for example, if you want to call to somebody, you can use your uh, uh, smartphone, 
without having an uh, engineering education. But when, for example, somebody has hit your car or, uh, I don't know, you want a divorce, uh, you need to hire a guy on an hourly rate. Then, uh, what we found out, uh, chatbots can help you with. At first, uh, let me tell you why uh, we picked up chatbots from all legal tech field. It's very simple, because in the word legal tech, in a chatbot, legal remains main word. So it's more legal project than tech. Our expertise in tech is, of course, strong, maybe stronger than other lawyers, but much uh, weaker than uh, any development team. So that's why we're focused on our strong side. Uh, chatbots can help and can show themselves best in uh, filling out documents and searching relevant information and tracking important events uh, like registration, uh, contract expiration, etc. Um, we have some principles. Uh, how do we work uh, in legal tech field? First, we deal only with the problems that are familiar to us. Because in, in the past, we have uh, an expertise of dealing with the problem that we invented. So it wasn't actually a problem to the market. So we try to solve only problems that, uh, that are painful to us. So we are sol uh, solving our own problems. Uh, the main goal for us is to find the easiest and the most convenient solution. So we are trying to think what client needs, not just what we would like to, to, to bring him, but what the real need of a client. And we concentrate on the legal issues rather than technical issues is what actually I've said. So let's move to our first, and actually one of the most interesting, it's very interesting because uh, there are not only victories in our history, and this is one of actually, at current time we can say the fail. Uh, it, it's, it was a corporate bot, actually we named him first as a paralegal bot. Uh, his task was to uh, fill up the forms, fill up the registration forms for the company. Because actually we had like four lawyers, four junior lawyers, uh, spending time only for that. Uh, and we figured out that they're asking uh, the same questions every time to each client. They fill up kind of the same information and uh, this process is very easy. So we created a chatbot uh, in uh, Telegram, because at that time Telegram was the first uh, bot-friendly platform. Uh, and actually we worked quite hard. We spent about six months on developing this bot, and both legal team and tech team worked together. Uh, and uh, they created a very good product. It, it worked well. Uh, yeah. The bot asks you questions, then checked up an information. For example, if you wanted to register a company, bot checked the same second in the register whether this name is already picked up by another company. Uh, but then our fail was uh, we couldn't uh, provide an actual registration because at that time. Such things like uh, bank ID and mobile ID didn't exist in Ukraine. Uh, so, and it meant to us that everything we have done uh, brought a too uh, too few value for our client. So, this bot remained asleep for about a year. Now, uh, laws has passed, can be came into force, and we're thinking about renovating this project, and uh, I hope till the end of the year it will work. But so this is part of our story, so we, you should uh, research a mark well for doing this uh, development. Oh, uh, then, uh, actually, second thing from, pan, from uh, corporate board, well, we figured out that almost the same process uh, a human has with trademarks. Uh, because patent attorneys, they actually spend their time mostly by filling up uh, quite simple applications and uh, providing almost the same consultants to every client. And we thought that we can 
provide such services that uh, we, we, we can optimize it. Having an experience in corporate board, we developed a pattern board, uh, but we tried to make it already very funny. Uh, we tried to bring in a, ca a character. So this board has, uh, it can, it has some, how we can tell, a tone of voice. Uh, it's a girl, uh, because we thought that it's more fun uh, and uh, more trustable. Uh, and uh, it works already for a year. Actually, everybody uh, now can uh, go to Facebook or to web, right, patentbot.online, uh, and uh, do the search of a trademark, whether it's free or, or it's taken by uh, somebody else. Uh, it also provides some very simple consultations, but actually uh, we figured out that um, what it brought to our flag, uh, this board allowed people not to wait uh, till work it out and, and uh, go to patent attorney office to apply for a trademark. Even, for example, if you are drunk uh, Friday night and you invented a new name of a cocktail, you can directly from the bar apply for registering such a trademark. Uh, and uh, so, so it's quite user-friendly. And actually, we have lots of uh, applications done on weekends. Uh, the second thing is that uh, without having an office, uh, a very huge representative office, uh, we were allowed to bring down the price. So uh, services of this bot cost, I think, about four times cheaper than in the market, than the average price on the market. Uh, at first, we have launched it in only in Ukraine. Uh, I think it's in a slide. Yeah, but now it works already in United States and in European Union. Till the end of the year, it will work in China. So we also discovered a very interesting field that, for example, if inside the country you want to apply to a trademark, maybe you won't trust a bot. Maybe. But when you try uh, to go abroad, uh, hiring, hiring a patent attorney will be much harder for you and actually much expensive. So now our goal is to create from a patent board a global gateway of an IP registration. Uh, I think here we have some achievements, uh, but main achievement for me is one in, in 50 of trademarks in Ukraine now is filled by patent board. So it means like we are holding about 2% of the market, Ukrainian market, of course, a very small one, but we dream about having 2% of American and European and Chinese market. Uh, also, uh, already, uh, but of course, what, what's very hard about this uh, development, you can't stop it. It's like drought, actually, uh, because once you step in, you're trying to reach a product, it never ends. Uh, and uh, while actually our trademark search is also not not hundred percent ready now, it works, it works fine. But we are putting there an artificial intelligence block, uh, and then uh, already we have launched an uh, authorship timestamp. Uh, we are having in plan a domain registration and uh, trademark registration by Madrid system. Uh, I think uh, till the end of the year we'll have China, and in 19th uh, we'll have a Madrid system. But who knows, actually. Uh, also, we are trying to cover new countries. Uh, of course, we are proud that uh, we were the winners of uh, Hill, um, it's hard Innovation in Law Institute. We were recognized as the best, on one of the best innovations. Uh, all over the world, legal, they work with the legal tech, uh, and uh, they gave us some money actually. Uh, also on Product Hunt, uh, it's a platform in the United States, we were recognized as the bot of the year uh, in 2017. Uh, we were very happy, but they didn't give us any money, but still.
Uh, also, a uh, few words new, new about Pattern Bot. Uh, actually, we are, as far as we know, we are first in uh, European region uh, legal tech startup uh, that um, have uh, Chinese investment. Uh, biggest uh, Hong Kong uh, accelerator, Betatron, uh, has invested into us. Put is uh, put has put us to acceleration program. So part of our team has spent about three months in Hong Kong, uh, trying to understand what's happening there and how to reach uh, Chinese market. Uh, now they're all done, uh, they're here, we're still not in China, but uh, we're on that way. Um, I don't know, uh, we can, I can answer questions because the second part uh, later will tell. Uh, if there are any questions or anybody wants to say that we are doing uh, stupid stuff, uh, you're welcome and I will answer that. So, do, do we have any Q&A session now? Do we have questions? Yeah, at this moment, because, because I have to, to, to finish my part and go to, to the end. I can give you a mic. Yeah. Guys? No? Uh, no, we don't have questions. Oh, thank you. So, now I pass the uh, floor to Valeria. So, so please set up in the center. Thank you. Now, now I'm sorry, but I have to leave now. It was my pleasure to tell you about our innovation. Uh, we hope that it's it's not the last time. And actually, it's not all of our products. So, so we are pretty much packed about, with them. Um, so thank you all. Uh, thank you too. Uh, yeah, it's uh, great. It was great. Uh, and more information about uh, patent board. Um, uh, in the Ukrainian market, patent board started its work in July 2017. Uh, on, the, um, on the 28th of July, patent board uh, finished uh, work in the test mode. In the first 24 hours, the uh, board uh, made uh, $5,000 uh, selling its uh, services in a uh, registered uh, 12 trademark in Ukraine. An interesting fact is that uh, patent uh, attorneys uh, registered 35 uh, uh, trademarks uh, per month, uh, which means our board works uh, 10 times more productive. Uh, why patent worked? Uh, I can say most of all, but um, I say maybe something about his work. It follows five simple steps uh, to uh, begin a work in a patent board. Uh, First, uh, submitting a uh, registrate to search and uh, check uh, trademark availability. Uh, second, uh, filling uh, in the form of application. Third, paying for the trademark application. Uh, fourth, uh, fourth uh, tra tracking the application process. And uh, finally, five, uh, getting the uh, credit uh, certificate. Uh, it uh, currently operated in Ukraine, in the U.S and in the USA, and it is uh, scaling up to China by mid-2018, uh, uh, as uh, Artem said. Next, our board is uh, Star Board. Star was uh, created on managing the legal side of the movie-making. For now, Star Board in the actor's agreement with the crowd. It uh, sends a draft agreement to the actor who signed it uh, with the electronic uh, signature. Then support sends the signature agreement uh, to the shooting manager so that we uh, can uh, control as uh, the necessary agreement uh, in one place. However, so what is now a uh, uh, married to a uh, digital fine board administrator as it help uh, tracking uh, all the legal Accept to a uh, matter. Uh, I can uh, uh, take our partners of uh, tax parties uh, and the uh, sale of stuff. What Natalia Ratchenko will tell you about um, stuff what more in a video. Right, second.
we cannot hear it. It has there is no sound. Valeria, we cannot hear you. Uh, the sound. Don't hear. Yeah, no sound from video. Good, but uh, so I hate. Okay, we are again. Uh, another uh, board is pseudo board. Uh, the basic idea of this board is simple to uh, automate uh, preparation and uh, submission of all uh, procedure document to a board. Um, we start with uh, teaching our board to prepare a divorce uh, lawsuit complaint. It was an uh, upload uh, draft inside. Uh, it meant uh, chats with uh, Sudabot and uh, share with him all the uh, relevant information. Then the magic happens and uh, the client gets a uh, finished document that he can uh, apply to a court. Unfortunately, we are unable to submit the uh, automatic uh, due and uh, to the specific of our uh, legislation. Itself uh, and uh, necessary to file in it uh, personal. However, we hope that the situation will uh, change soon. Uh, since the concept of a uh, year court uh, is a uh, many now. Therefore, the board will be able to file a yes signature uh, lawsuit uh, automatically. In addition uh, to its uh, main uh, purpose, uh, preparing and uh, filing a uh, lawsuit, a suit of order gives uh, advice uh, on uh, how to behave uh, in a court and uh, what to do when the suit of order comes. The main advance to the suit of order services are price uh, available uh, 24 by 7 and the time uh, savings. Uh, in addition, many people to know, do not uh, want to share with uh, the uh, informer lawyer uh, the detail of the personal lawyer. With both, this personal will be anonymous. Next trade board. It's our uh, the trade board, the last board, uh, not the least. Uh, Dreadboard is a chatbot in Telegram, in Telegram with a cheese where you can uh, automate uh, supplies and get uh, additional tools uh, for financing supplies. So Dreadboard can uh, collect uh, compliant information on all operations and the transaction that they make a supply manager at the a price of, uh, in automatic mode and uh, create uh, Convention analytical charts. Thank you. Trade optimizes uh, find the relevation uh, supplier as uh, the parties uh, agree uh, on on terms and uh, condition uh, through the trade boot chart. Trade boot, uh, insert the condition into the agreement and send the uh, copies to the parties. The parties send the document by the electronic uh, signature. And uh, next, our uh, technical... It's a legal alarm. The main cause of the application is uh, to provide uh, prompt uh, legal assistance and uh, suppress a violation of uh, rights by law in a former agency in the event of a uh, sudden ones of uh, advised uh, actions. Already at the down stage, the application uh, contained best tips from our lawyer as well as the phones uh, of the main help uh, services. In the event of uh, an uh, unfortunate uh, situation when the legal alarm uh, function is uh, activated by pressing the button, 
the application determination your location uh, and uh, also check uh, the uh, road uh, in a case of uh, movement. This also uh, you were to find you anywhere in the country and the uh, problem to come to your rescues. Operation of the application support uh, center work in uh, 24 by 7 mode, uh, keeping track of uh, your security, regulation of the day of the week and uh, time of day. So we finished. Yes, finished. Uh, and uh, if you have any question, you can uh, write to our emails and uh, we can uh, uh, give you <laughs> us. Okay, uh, can we make a small uh, question session now with you? Hello, Valeria? Oh. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, do we have questions for Valeria? Uh, okay. Hello, Valeria. Uh, actually, it's really nice, uh, nice chatbots you have developed. And actually, I have one question about Tradebot. Uh, this mm -hmm. chatbot, have you implemented this chatbot into the client system? Um, do you have uh, accept clients where you implemented this Tradebot chatbot, or is it just prototype and you are thinking about it? Uh, not yet, this bot is a, a, a forest bot. Not yet. Mm. Any other questions? Hello, Valeria. I just wanted to ask uh, how do you actually get the revenue from these bots? I mean, What's your profit in, if instead of going to you and paying much higher money, you not earning it from you know these bots? Like uh, why you decided even to develop it? Two mm. seconds. <laughs> Have you understand the question? Yes, and then. We get uh, paying for services uh, uh, as small as some, but many uses. Thank you. Any other questions? No, no more questions? Last chance, last call. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Valeria. Thank you so much uh, uh, for your presentation. And now we will turn to discussion, discussion session. So uh, thank you for your time. You can watch us, uh, of course, uh, on uh, YouTube. <laughs> I, thank I, you very much. Bye. Bye. So, uh, do you still want discussion ses session? Are you still not tired? Okay. So, can I uh, uh, please grab some uh, sweets, okay, to make more energy? <laughs> and I want to welcome back uh, to the stage uh, our speakers, please. Okay. Uh, just uh, let's take a look here. Maybe someone else uh, wants to join? Some lawyers, some computer scientists. Someone wants to join? Okay, so uh, do you have any questions or you would like us to speak? Because still is discussion, we are community. So, so we can go somewhere. Oh, oh yeah, near near people. Yeah. Okay. All right, we can sit and do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, 
try to show somehow. Yeah. Here we go. So, so I have a, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, in, um, in medical, I'm really concerned about medical field with chatbot. Do you think um, at some point it's going to be it's going to be able to to play the same role that Google is playing now? But when people have any problem, they go straight to Google to, to ask for for whatever problem they have. That maybe Google should suggest something to them, maybe some drugs or what it might be, although Google gives them like, you know, 200 answers, but still, not we don't mind, we still go there every time to check for, to ask for answers. Do you think chatbots can give more specific, a bit more detailed answer to us, specific symptoms, maybe some symptoms like that? Do you think it will get to some point that you might be able to do that? Anybody? <laughs> okay. um, may I can answer the, I think yes. Like um, if you take like Alexa or Google Hub, uh, they are using deep learning. And deep learning is a chatbot which are learning from you. So the more you talk to them, the more they will know about you. So in the future, yes, of course, with a, um, a chatbot which is programming, uh, especially for that uh, and for this case, and the more you will tell him information, the more it will be able to find a relevant answer for that and it's what is interesting with chatbots is like you say when you go to Google you need to look for the information you need to to write uh, some keywords and uh, look to I don't know how many pages I don't like that it's boring for me and but with a chatbot it will know you so at the end it will go more like a personalized assistant so it will bring you to a website or to direct website which is good for you. And uh, I, I saw some videos, like some person thinks like uh, really soon, like most of application should disappear and be replaced by chatbot because everything we're gonna be lead by a chatbot, you're gonna talk to your chatbot and it will give open every application you need. So. I'm just gonna add something to the symptoms thing that you have just suggested. In medicine, like some diseases mimic each other. You know, many diseases have this flu-like symptoms. So this chatbot would make like many mistakes and cause people paranoia. For example, <laughs> I would have simple flu, and this let's say uh, chatbot tells me, "Hey, you have hepatitis C." Let's say. That's 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 that's, that's exactly what I'm mentioning. Yes. Before. Yeah. That's that's the point I'm trying to make. That is it going to be more? Target specific target matter in, in, in general sense. Is it going to be able to be more to be more practical, not just give you like because if, like as you said in medicine, there are several things with several symptoms that uh, they are not disease. They are just stuff. The way our body reacts to, to, to any kind of problem. So that's what I'm asking. If it's going to be, it's going to be a bit more, a bit more clearer when it comes to to that. Yeah, I, I would like to add a little bit. When we talk about medicine, it's really sensitive, really, really sensitive, and we have to be um, to look uh, from uh, not 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 so. We we cannot make mistakes in medicine. They they cost people lives. So uh, we try to, to to develop machine translation for medicine uh, field. And it, it actually still uh, doesn't work like like uh, people would like because it, it's making mistakes. Uh, chatbots uh, cannot be perfect uh, at, at the beginning. They will make many, many mistakes and then they, they will learn or will be teached by time. So I, I, I believe that in, in, in some uh, exact domains, uh, this deep learning methods or neural networks can can be applied. And for example, in Lithuania, I know one company who is working with uh, neural networks, and they are uh, they are recognizing uh, a cancer from the photos. Uh, so uh, they are doing good job, and they are uh, they they have really impressive progress. Uh, but still, at the end of the day. Uh, people are sitting and uh, reviewing what uh, what the 
use uh, artificial intelligence as, as recognized. So the same for the chatbot. I'm still insisting on my point of view that this artificial intelligence, one day, if it continues like this, it's going to rule us and to become smarter than us. Because as you said, we cannot eliminate the human brain, right? But all this amount of data that those bots can handle with time, what if someone teaches them to self-learn and to self-discover and to self-invent? This is the question. So uh, uh, our friend said, uh, work for robots and, li and life for human beings. What if they reverse it? <laughs> <laughs> so those science fiction movies, like, you know? I can answer to that. I think it's more a political question. For, yes. And I think uh, in a time, the, the problem is not going to be um, like, why chatbot are taking job the the time i think it's going to be a time we will need to ask do we need to work yes. and the, the question will be about work and uh, more about this than what ai is evolving because why why stopping something which is for now and if we take all the precautions we need why stopping this because it's evolving in a good direction of course it can be used for Wrong, yes. wrong uh, purposes. Wrong, wrong purposes, and uh, always, but it, it will be with everything without yes. uh, without technology or with technology. So still, we should remember the pre laws of robotics. You know what pre laws of yeah, robotics? Let's hope they stick to the first two. Yeah, still. Yeah. Does everybody know the three well, was a robot? No. I think there is a movie with that. Yeah. I think for what's interesting is no more to agree, agree with you. In terms is is in the same the same uh, ideology about AI. Yeah. yeah, but still uh, those uh, those tasks that needs uh, a human uh, human thinking or yes. uh, you know uh, like marketing inventions of new things. They still will be covered by people and maybe robots can do part, partly yes. some jobs that are more uh, like uh, everyday tasks that are you know, not, not really interesting for, for people like transcribing text, like translating, making no barrier between languages and so on. So uh, yes, those things could be done, but uh, to create marketing material, to create movies, uh, to do some advertisement, so all of those creative things uh, not be part of that. Yes. And one thing, so I'm sorry to you. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to add also uh, some uh, key points to the discussion. Uh, if we look uh, a little back and what we can learn, how technology was regulated uh, by law. So we can check uh, the case law, which already exists. So one example, Tiffany versus eBay uh, case, in which, uh, okay, it, 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 like a small description of the case, so uh, Tiffany blamed uh, eBay that they are selling uh, Tiffany's uh, things from second hands. And their policy is not to sell from second hands, only luxury things from uh, the original shop. And eBay said, come on, like we are just technology platform, we cannot do anything. And the, the decision of the court was that uh, eBay has fulfilled uh, Tiffany viewers and uh, to put more effort in yes. uh, fighting with those infringements of uh, Tiffany's IP law. So I think similar uh, could, be done. Could, could be done with chat bots. If Chatbots will start violating the law, of course, especially GDPR uh, questions. So, and one thing, like social media, and the, the thing that we don't have to work and robots have to, like, we want to reach this stage. Like, psychologically, you know, we need to work, we need to have a purpose in life. If this purpose stops and resets, I think we will, like, the majority will go for suicide. Yeah. Yes. Well, 
solve in many yeah. problems. And, and now that's more philosophical questions. So, yes. Yeah, so it, it's topic, but um, wh what you ask uh, for chatbot, you work for every technology, and you ask some questions people were asking in the fifth centuries, uh, the 70th century was when the first, um, the first technology was occurring, the first uh, the, the thing was replacing us, which, which was taking job. And yes, okay. so yes, it's. Uh, I agree. It's a, it's a big uh, it's a big question. And uh, but the problem is like more philosoph philosophical, and uh, there's not yes. enough philosophers who think about that. I'm just really putting some like questions into concern, but I really like the idea and enjoyed this presentation. And I think you are working on the future, really the future. Okay, thank yes. you. Uh, I'm sorry, it was actually interrupt this. Uh, World and set up in backyard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the question is uh, about uh, is there any open uh, free train models? So for example, distinguishing recognition, there are plenty of models you can download and you already have face recognitions and many other objects specialized. Are there anything with the language for chatbot that you could just use and uh, if out of the box would do the chit chat talking, you could add and build on top of that? Uh, there are many platforms uh, built, commercial platforms and uh, free of charge uh, for big, la big languages, so English, French, Chinese, and other uh, bigger languages. But when we talk about small languages, um, well, I think there is no such, I mean, small languages, I mean, both languages, Lithuanian, Latvian, Estonian, there's no, no such. But uh, for example, if you would like to create your own bot, a simple bot, you can use Microsoft Chatbot platform. It has really huge potential to create a uh, uh, narrow domain uh, chatbot. It, it could be really kind of smart. Yeah, I, I wanted just to add that uh, that guy, which created like the famous, uh, first famous uh, chatbot, Elisa, uh, almost mo more than 50 years ago. So actually, he has won a competition, Lochner's Prize competition. So uh, this competition idea, they believed in Turning's uh, rules. Uh, so the idea is that uh, human cannot uh, understand this uh, communicating humans or others. So uh, the first uh, competition was in controlled environment. So they said that, okay, he can talk only, like chats, he can talk only about politics, for example, specific, like American politics or whatever. So uh, first three was won by him and uh, when he won uh, the last time, so it worked in open, not controlled environment. So already it is done a long time ago. Uh, is it was uh, IBM Watson that, that he faced? No. Okay. If I remember, no, no, no. 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 Okay. It was in 95. Oh. So for the small languages, I think that the solution would be to just use the big languages and then apply automated translation or something like that. Uh, Microsoft is doing this. You can you can try this. Uh, we have experience. Uh, our clients uh, have experience with this, so it cannot be applied in business. Actually, it's, it's uh, you know in business uh, you have to con control everything. So if you if you if you use machine translation, what quality machine translation? Okay, Google uh, right now is performing quite quite well with neural networks, but but still it is making mistakes. Especially when we talk about uh, the domain client uh, client working in. So if we are working, you are working in telecom or IT sector. You have your own uh, dictionary, your own terminology. You would like to what perform in, in, in different ways. So, uh, so it's, uh, it's risky, 
uh, as you know, clients are uh, doing such things on, on different platforms for Lithuanian language, but uh, but it's really, really limited. And uh, at the end of the day, they are facing those limitations and uh, asking about uh, help. Google uh, has uh, many languages, but not Baltic. So, okay, uh, we're talking not about supporting those languages, like characters of our languages, like uh, different letters. Uh, we are talking about uh, uh, natural language understanding. Uh, does they understand our language? Okay, I think it's a matter of time, uh, because they are doing uh, a lot of uh, good stuff, uh, for example, uh, they have announced uh, uh, speech recognition for Lithuanian language, and you can use it on your Android phone and actually try it. It, it works quite good for writing uh, some messages. They have made uh, machine translation. It works uh, quite good to understand the content you are translating. And probably they, they, they are going to, to introduce those uh, natural language understanding, natural language processing tools for, for not just for main languages, but for small languages as well, so it's a matter of time. Ah. Yes, um, a question for you especially. You say you are working on quite new projects for Lithuania. Are any of them based on multi-language platform? Like, for example, foreigners have a quite common problem abroad, like not all the websites, not everything is translated from the English. Oh, sorry, I'm a little bit especially with the translator. So are you working on, let's say, for Lithuania, Lithuanian, Russian, and English, are there any projects that include like creating bots in more than one language? Okay, uh, we're talking about chatbots, yes, not yeah. about translation. Uh, okay, chatbots, we have one platform that is multilingual. So it means that we are supporting right now, we support five languages. So if I would like, I'm, I'm just connecting to the platform, Pl platform is not English, uh, I mean interface, and uh, I'm creating my own bot. Uh, uh, I'm adding more people to this, to making content and so on, and then we are publishing it, uh, for example, for Lithuanian language. So, Lithuanian, Latvian, Estonian, English, and uh, Russian. We, we can handle those five languages. Okay, so yeah. this Muna bot you mentioned, right? It is Latvian. It is common. Yes, because uh, there's no need to prepare different domain, different languages, different languages, because the, the major clients are Latvians, because Center of Registers uh, operates only in Latvia, and uh, it should talk in the national language. For example, imagine in Lithuania, we, we will uh, develop chatbot for our center of registers. They, they have probably zero client from Latvia who, who, who came and, and then and asked something to this bot. So the main flow, uh, as, in, as I told you uh, in my presentation, you have to feel the pain of the client. So if you feel that pain that, uh, Lithuanian language is getting a lot of questions, uh, repeating questions in Lithuanian language, he has to cover this one. If there are some 20% uh, in, in Russian, it's okay, you can cover those uh, in later stage. But first of all, you have to create the base of the chatbot. You have to feel, do you happy with this uh, uh, bot, how he interacts with you, with the, with the, with the client, how you feel. Uh, Training this bot, uh, uh, do you feel the, the satisfaction coming back from, from the clients and evaluating those answers? So, you know, the, the, ma the major pain is the, the, the most important. Okay, so 
Okay, we have time for more two questions, and then we can switch to an informal discussion at the Swedes. Okay, we still we have <laughs> to destroy them. So, <laughs> few last questions, or do you want to switch? Okay. Someone, someone take that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, one time ago, I had the idea to create a chatbot for uh, Lithuanian tax uh, declarations and so on. Because when you open the web page with thousands of options, yeah. you lost the uh, minute when you use that page. So, and when I tried to look in the Agile file, I saw that uh, all the things are hardwired to programming language, and basically if, if you uh, chose this number for this field, you use this, and, and so on. So the question, is there any attempt to automate, that, for example, you need to say, I, I would like to pay my taxes, what should I do? Are there any attempts to? Yeah, what, what I'm talking right now, uh, this is this is about uh, the integration of third-party software uh, to the bot. Bot has such possibility, but we are facing, in, in this stage, we are facing those things like authentication, like uh, like uh, communication between chatbot and uh, third-party software. And uh, usually it's not that easy, for example, uh, sometimes call centers uh, have really good software, but the software cannot, uh, uh, cannot accept uh, third parties APIs, so uh, there are uh, communication problems. But first of all, uh, as I said, we're just starting in Lithuania, so we have to uh, prepare the, the prototype of chatbot that could be able to communicate in, 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 in simple questions or more often uh, uh, asked questions, and then uh, the, the second phase of this is integration uh, to the internal systems. It's uh, a little bit complicated, but when you have the, a base, uh, there are no 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 uh, no limitations uh, for, for for future integration. You know, just just communication between uh, uh, two platforms. So it's just uh, no rocket science, just uh, programming. Thanks. Yeah. I'm not sure if we have. Yeah, we can yeah. continue. Uh, yes. It's about context. For example, uh, for many cases, uh, in many things in tax paying, uh, users have to answer the same questions. Uh, your age, uh, whatever, same, same questions for multiple purposes. So uh, are there any uh, regards to GDPR uh, things that uh, a person should have in his own sort of uh, Context that we could upload to a chatbot, and chatbot would know basic information about this person. Uh, it depends. It depends about realization. How you, uh, what kind of realization you are doing. For example, if you are doing realization to the messenger, uh, messenger, you, you have to uh, take into account messenger uh, Facebook rules. It has default rules, and uh, you know it's all GDPR. Hard how you can use your uh, communication with this uh, person. If we talk about integration into website, you know, it's just uh, general information. We, uh, chatbot can ask uh, personal uh, information just in, in, in that case, and he needs this information for authenticating uh, things or so on, so you know. Actually, uh, GDPR regulates uh, a lot of things and he covers uh, all those related issues, and I think yeah, it's a kind of good document to rely on. So perhaps there is no possibility to uh, provide information about yourself and then get it back and delete from servers and keep it delete. Why not? For example, we have to talk about uh, the real kind of examples. Uh, for example, in Lithuania we have uh, uh, Manukili, yes? It's uh, you yeah, declare, declaring your electricity, yes? So you have to log in first of all, yeah? So when you log in, uh, the, the chatbot could be able to receive your all personal information, including your account, your bill, your everything. Your, you can just uh, declare your, uh, your spendings of electricity in, 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 the, in texting for chatbot. 
So and or and even pay for for this in Java, whatever. It depends on you know, use case. But I do not see any limitations uh, in, in GDPR things because it's really really strictly regulated things and uh, uh, good written form uh, how you can use. There are many, not many, but uh, some cases are explained by our regulators. And, and, uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for discussion for those who came and please, uh, please scan this code uh, in, in your phone and you can enter uh, what you think about the Ziva. Uh, and we can just can you do it now and we can check uh, what is the main uh, opinion should we continue <laughs> such kind of events and then if yes then we'll switch uh, to which topics uh, which are the most interesting to you so all right I'm not sure can do the same uh, Only two. <laughs> Only two is watching now. <laughs> so, well, it's okay. Yeah, let's go for the future. We'll have more. <clears throat> or if you cannot uh, read the code, uh, you can enter answer garden dot slash slash seven six eight nine one six. So you will get the same address. And just enter what you answer the question. Yeah, we have to put the topics we would like to cover in the next meetup. Yeah. Uh, I, I will show the, another QR code. This is not the, the right yeah. one. Uh, oh, sorry. This is about the topics. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I already. Yeah. So, and another QR code. Uh, show us, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is what do you think about uh, today's event? So uh, we can try to check with the results. Uh, okay, wonderful meta. Good. Yeah. I see. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, about the topics, do we have any? No time for us. Not yet. Okay, so. You can find us on Facebook, and uh, I will post uh, the same questions. You can also respond them. So thank you very much for coming, and uh, please grab some sweets. And uh, you are welcome to the next our meetings. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much.